Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of the IT Business Podcast. I am your host, Marvin B., coming at you from the lovely state of Florida, home base, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where we have probably been under a severe thunderstorm warning, a severe flood warning. Uh, there was a tornado watch earlier today. It is not your typical sunny state. We probably had, I'm going to guess, a foot of rain today. And the guest that I have coming on later tonight will confirm that. We have Michael Goldstein with Land Infotech. He is one of the tech veterans that you should get to know if you don't already. And uh, we'll come up and we even have a couple of Florida man stories to share. So we're going to do all that tonight. But first, let me get you started with the news. And the first bit of news is I want to start with, I had announced a couple of weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, that I was going to be starting trials. Now, normally, you know that I don't do trials until the end of the year, but I had so many vendors reach out to me, and I actually had a need where it's time for me to get a PSA. That was because I was going to hire a tech full-time been the first time since I had a full-time tech since 2012. If you don't know my story, I've got four subcontractors now and we take care of everything for my clients across the state, but I need somebody that's here in the office taking care of stuff when I leave or somebody that I can send when, uh, you know, some little stuff needs to be done. I can stay at the office. So I figured it's time for me to come full circle, get a PSA. So I started a trial with Synchro and that trial is now over. So just to let you know, Synchro, I like the program. I like the people. If I were starting an MSP today, Synchro might be the package that I go with, but because of where I am with my business right now, the tools I've got, the stack, I couldn't make the switch just yet. So I am still in search of that PSA to add to my stack. Uh, I've let the people at Synchro know. Uh, I just, eh, you know, I wanted it to be the thing, but it just quite wasn't. We'll go into all those reasons later. You can catch me off air, message me, do whatever, but I'm not going to go into all of that now. Just know that tried to do it, uh, just not yet, maybe soon. Uh, I do want to thank some people in the MSP Unplugged crowd. I had put a post in there a couple of days ago um, because of, well, I was going to say because of COVID, but not really. See, when I stopped playing ball and stopped being active, going to the gym, doing all that stuff, I started to get fat. I'm just going to say it. No candy coating there put on some weight and, you know, I, listen, I had gotten to the point where I said, I'm done. I don't need to impress anybody. Wife's been with me 20 years. I think I'm good to go. But many of you have made comments that it looks like I drink a lot, which I don't, but for some reason I'm getting a belly and I think my butt getting big. Uh, I've broken two chairs in my office in the last couple of years. Now, Granted, I've been buying cheap Office Depot shares for a hundred bucks or something. So I said, it's time for me to man up and get a real chair. So I asked people for the chairs that they use. Uh, got some great ideas. Man, are they expensive. But I'm going to have to take the plunge. I've gotten some great, uh, some great brand names. Herman Miller, Steelcase, some other names I've never heard of before. But... Uh, I will be probably going to some used business stores here 
uh, looking at some of these chairs, seeing if I can get one on the cheap, you know, $300, something like that. Do you have any ideas on a good quality chair? Now, listen, I'm not a big guy. I mean, I'm probably well over 200 that I should be. I, 200 is where I should be. I'm a little bit above that. So not 250. Don't go berserk. But, uh, you know, for my size, I'm a pretty big guy, so I need to find a nice chair. And I want it to be a good mesh chair. Don't want leather. Florida gets hot, sticks to my legs if I wear shorts. Don't want that. So if you have any thoughts on chairs, go ahead and send me a message and let me know. Let's see here. Oh, I did an appearance on the Tech Bar, episode 5-5. Five, five. If you want to see me there with good friend Ray Orsini and uh, see how I fared in Florida, not Florida, uh, head over to the website, itbusinesspodcast.com. I have put a link to the video right there on the homepage so you can see me in my unglory on Tech Bar number 5-5. Five, five. And... And see, I was going to read a press release because now that I'm a member of the press, I get info and I don't think I downloaded it. But just so you know, you know, Rob Ray, my good friend, godfather of the channel, has gone over to PAX 8. And they are now just reeling it in. They have more people joining them. And let me see. Here it is. PAX 8 announces David Powell as VP of Sales Strategy. So the writing is too small for me to read it now, but maybe I'll put a link to that there. So they have a new person there that is going to be working uh, with managed service providers to develop and strengthen their cybersecurity offerings. So PAX 8, man, they are kicking it. And... PAX 8 Beyond, happening this June 11th through the 13th, I will be there. So that should be pretty good. Yes, I am flying west of the Mississippi for a second time in a year. So, uh, oh, look at there, my good friend, Eric Anthony. Uh, oh, Eric, do I have your... So, Ignite. Oh, oh, here it is. Eric Anthony, if you're still watching... Uh, I had this. This is a pin that I picked up while at Exchange. And while I did not put this in the final running for the swag of the event, I picked this up for whatever reason to look at it, thinking it was a pin, but it's not. It is actually a screwdriver set. So you screw off the handle and all the little bits pop out. And this is a horrible thing to do for a podcast. But if you're watching the video, I've got all the little bits and things in here. And you stick it in the top of the pen that you would normally write with. And it becomes a screwdriver. But it looks like a pen. So I know that this is horrible for an audio podcast. So if you're listening, I would say go to the video to see this. But the video is not doing it justice either because it's a silver pin and all of the white light in this room is bouncing off of it so you can't even see the logo. But so, Eric, thank you for the, oh, it's called the mini toolkit. It's what it's called there. So our good friends over at night. And uh, for those of you that don't know, Eric actually has a show that he does just before this. He starts at 7 p.m. Eastern and rolls over into this one and uh we keep talking about getting together eric so I, I i know i sent you the link to sign up and say hello so uh just uh sign up let's 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 make this thing happen all right let us do this let's say hello to our sponsors and get the show going i've got our guest in the room here so, of course, the IT Business Podcast is presented by NetAlly, your ally for networking solutions in the channel. Are you tired of spending hours troubleshooting network issues? Check out NetAlly's family of handheld network testers where you can quickly 
Get complete copper and fiber network connectivity tests in just minutes. Deploy, manage, and maintain today's complex network troubleshooting with Net Ally, Net Ally, your partner in network testing and wireless uh, analysis. And the live show is presented by Computers Done Right, a managed services company providing IT support and management in Venice, Florida and surrounding areas. They prioritize good customer relations, provide top-notch care. Not only do they provide computer repair and virus removal, they also do website design, social media, and customized business solutions. So for all of your computer repair needs, go to computersdoneright.com. And we have a new sponsor. Many of you will recognize our good friend over at Instant House Call, Corey Fruitman reached out and uh, said hello. So I'd like to welcome Instant House Call to the family and we'll play this new sponsor commercial in honor of them. Support tool, look no further than Instant House Call with unique features like personalized branding, auto PC repair, and unattended remote access, Instant House Call is the perfect solution for IT professionals and MSPs. Try it free for 15 days, no obligation, and no credit card needed. Visit instanthousecall.com today. All right. Thank you for all of your support. I am joined, as promised by the president and CEO of Land Infotech, an award-winning IT services company here in South Florida. Michael Goldstein is in the house. Michael, how are you? Hey, Marvin. How you doing, man? I'm happy to be here. Oh, great, great, great. Now, just to let everybody know, Michael and I both are here in Fort Lauderdale. In fact, our offices are about 2.1 miles apart. But we never see each other. <laughs> we got to see each other at events. Other yeah, than that. yeah, we got to go to to Dallas or <laughs> to DC or Orlando to see each other. That's uh, it. Or we do a Zoom call on ASCII. That's it. Uh, and today we had talked about doing the podcast in studio here or at your office. Thank God we did not decide on that because today was the worst day of rain that I have seen. I mean probably since a hurricane. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Last year. It's crazy. Oh, man. Uh, so Michael is here in South Florida. Now, you weren't always here in South Florida. No, no, you know, I, some might consider me a long-term transplant because I'm here 26 years. But, you know, like most of us Floridians, there aren't too many that are born and bred here. So, uh, yep, started up in New York, up, up on Long Island in New York City. Oh, okay. Long Island. There you go. Can't shake that accent. What is it? The Long Island medium? Is that uh, is that where she's from? <laughs> yes, yes. Wouldn't say that's their claim to fame, but yes, everybody knows that. Okay. All right, Mike. So for those that do not know you, uh, Land Infotech is the company name. And when did you... I'm trying to remember because I, I think I get you confused with another land company down here. So give us a little bit of history. Sure. So Land Infotech is tw is actually 14 years old, you know, last month. Um, prior to that, I was a partner in another firm out of Long Island that was uh, out there called Land Associates. And we've uh -huh. been doing business down in uh, South Florida since, you know, early 90s. But you know, listen, I started off there. 25 plus years ago, you know, three of us, you know, grew it up to 65, you know, people, three cities, four cities, actually, you know, New York, Washington, Raleigh, and South Florida, and eventually moved my family down here. You know, I was, I was moonlighting, let's call it, or, uh, you know, in the heyday, firms would pay, put me up down here, you know, fly me down. But after missing a couple of uh, winter storms, you know, my wife came down and was like, this is where I want to be. So uh, separated out from my partner, you know, uh, 14 years ago, you know, where we got a big vertical in the legal industry, not for profit, you know, kind of grew this. And, you know, like you, we all become staples in this community. There's too many yeah. of us that come and go. 
Yep. Yep. Um, all right. So I was, I, I was almost going to say the name, but I wasn't sure, but yep. I know the name land associates as well. And I think I came across them because we share the same vertical. I also have predominantly lawyers in my portfolio. And I think we went up, you know, against each other in some business. And I think I won one and you won all the rest. Uh, you know what? It, it, we all try to be fair, right? You know, we all have to be good, you know, good citizens in our MSP market. Yeah. So let me ask you, what was it that drew you to law firms? And did that, was that by choice? Was it by accident? I, I will say by accident. I, I, I do know, um, you know, I was, so my oldest son is 36. So 36 years ago, I was hired by one of the largest law firms in the US um, to come in and be a PC coordinator. That's what it was called there. They had a, a 10, $12 million IBM mainframe that was there. And the firm had eight PCs with no network when we started. So in the end, you know, those days, you know, we remember the old Westlaw days. Yeah. Westlaw came into play at a large firm and offered us 100 PCs based on three years of dial-up time into the Westlaw <laughs> database. Those IBM PC ATs, if anyone remembers. And, you know, uh, right 80, away. 8088 or 8086? 8086 has started on that and moved to 8088s. Okay. So the interesting thing is that, you know, PCs started to take off. So I went from just the PC guy, you know, that w was in place. And, you know, we kind of developed with that firm. You know, we, we figured out a way to put a third party product into an IBM mainframe and give the attorneys the ability to dial into it. And then my life was never the same, you know, my son was born that, you know, you go back to the days of uh, 1987 and, uh, you know, in reality, I remember being, my son was in the hospital out on Long Island and uh, I heard my name being paged over the PA system. Yes, no pagers, no cell phones, no anything. And I went to the phone and uh, it was the managing partner's assistant and said, listen, Mike, while you're while we're talking to you, your wife's being showered with gifts, congratulations on your new son. Of course, no privacy laws either at that point. <laughs> right. You know, we know that you're going home tomorrow. We arranged to have someone pick you up, you know, a, a nanny to come stay with you. But we'll give you a day and a half at home and we need you to fly to Dallas for a case. And after that, connecting up a computer, you know, doing this, my life never changed. Yeah, you know, sorry, my life really went crazy because as these cases came up, if I was flying out of our office was right in one Battery Park Plaza or overlooking Statue of Liberty. And as cases came up, you know, they they would say, hey, Mike, we need you to fly here, go up to the 34th floor of the travel agency, get tickets. And if I was flying at a JFK, I'd actually take a helicopter over there. Didn't know where I was going as I got to the places. And if I flew out of LaGuardia, it would be a speedboat. You get to this place, you know, big cities. I'd, I'd have PCs waiting. You know, I, I didn't bring clothes. I didn't have time to go home. I didn't have anything. And what would happen is the Brooks Brothers guy would come out and knock on the door, you know, measure you. I'd have suits, clothes, underwear, everything that would be out there and everything be charged to the firm. So I, I, I'd start living that life there. And, you know, in those old days, you know, we didn't have document management. We didn't even have a network. So in reality, you know, we were writing code for everything. And no, what at that at that time, you probably weren't even getting Westlaw on CD yet, were you? It was it was pure, you know, 9,600, 1,200 board on Hayes modem dial-up. So, so in reality, you know, we put a token ring network in. We did a whole bunch of things. But I anything that we needed, we would write the code for. So I kind of learned document management. I kind of learned OCR. We had Ray Kurzweil come in and show us the first OCR programs. But we had a word processing center that was... Seven by twenty-four, three sixty-five. You know, and started with the old word perfect, and in in a year and a half, we went from a hundred PCs to six hundred and fifty PCs. Mm. Yeah. So you know, wrote it, did that. You know, kind of left that firm after I burnt out after four plus years. And you know, their their managing partner at the time was Cyrus Vance Senior, the ex Secretary of State. There were many times where we were in the office, and you know, Ronald Reagan would be calling in, and you know, had 
represented all different kinds of crazy clients. So, you know, learn the industry from the town up. And you probably say the same thing that, yes, the words changed, but the tech really didn't change. You know, lawyers still have to do litigation support. We still need some form of document management. They're typing, doing product, need to find files. We were kind of secure. We were doing these things. So I kind of grew in the legal industry. And, you know, over time, we, you know, started Atlanta Associates. We hooked up with PC Docs, Off Solutions, you know, Nobel Group Wise. And you know, we've been an iManage partner for 30 plus years. So we kind of understood the legal industry from inside out. Yeah, it's uh, it's once you get in, it's I'm not going to say it's hard to get out, but there is a a breadth and depth of tech that is needed. And, you know, it's got to be done faster and faster. And it's more, you know, voluminous, the amount of stuff that they need to do to prepare for trial. And I remember, you know, years ago when, you know, they would hire people just for trial prep. Oh, yeah. you know, to get all the documents managed, get, you know, put all their, you know, PDFs in order and, you know, get their dockets and all of that stuff. It was it was a lot of stuff. Listen, you know, I remember inside, you know, there was, a, you know, there was an office for docketing inside this large firm. And I will tell you, it was like a mega sized book that filled the giant table and they would actually hand write in the docket dates. And when the New York Law Journal had an online system to track the docketing. So in reality, you know, listen, you go out there, you do these things. We used to have full text search with a product called BRS Search. We used mm -hmm. to box all those litigation documents, ship them to the Philippines to be coded and came back with those sheets. And that's how they got their coding sheets. You know, this is before the FedEx days. Yeah. So, you know, worked on a lot, a lot of large cases. So I think, you know, a lot of it really hasn't changed. And I, I really understood the power of understanding an industry, talking their language. Yes, you know, the building blocks for all of us across industries are really kind of the same, but you have to talk their lingo, understand this, and understand that if I could save every attorney 10 seconds on an hour every day for that period, what kind of money that brings into the firm? Well, I learned that if you could tell them, I can save you a point one here, and a point three there that translated for them. So, yep. so time the money, you know, no different than than us. But you know, we 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 offer, you know, we do a lot of document management work for through I manage, you know, I'll say all over the country, a lot of client, we have a lot of Caribbean clients. It's something that I've been out there. When I went to their partner conference in in uh, Chicago in January, you know, their CEO hangs out with me, you know, uses my name inside of and and I manage represents 85. 85 of the top 100 law firms in the country. So when that guy says, hey, my old buddy, Mike Goldstein, where are you there in front of, you know, 500 people, including attorneys, it's kind of cool. So I think that, you know, like you, we all, we all have to be experts in our industry. You know, I won't say that legal is everything, you know, which also led to not-for-profit, but like we won't turn down a different industry because building blocks and doing a good job and it's all about good service. Yep, that is right. So I've got a few others as well. I've got my medical clients, got my my architects and my accountants, uh, but the bulk is is law firms. And once once you get in, they love to refer. So that has helped me tremendously. And once they understand the amount of uptime that we can provide them yep. with giving them the right equipment. You know, it used to be lawyers were always called the cheap ones because you know, they wanted to stay on WordPerfect 4.2 for as long as they could. <laughs> Gift F7. <laughs> yep. Uh, but once they made the change, saw the benefits, and realized they could stay up, uh, selling them the stack wasn't that hard. And I think that, I, I don't know about you, but every time when I meet some fellow MSPs, we talk about verticals. You mentioned, you know, lawyers, you know, they sit out there and they give you that face. And, you know, it's like anything else, right? You know, if you understand an industry and you go out there, just like I said, they appreciate that. And that's the difference between, you know, the $200 uh, an hour lawyer to the $1,000 guy that's the expert in his field, you know, on, on that side of it. And I think we're just the same way. All right. Now, you also mentioned not-for-profits. So I had to limit myself. I only have two not-for-profits. I actually went through a period where I was getting a bunch of them and, I had to kind of pull back for me and just, I had two that I've kept and stay with my other stuff. You seem to make that 
a staple as part of your client base. Is Am I reading that correctly? You are 100% right. So a couple things. A, there's nothing like giving back, right? I think you, you, you see that, you know, and I always do say that lots of times anybody could write a check, but when you're out there going out and we volunteer for their events, um, you know, what we did is we developed a couple things. A, we developed, a, a, a we call it GIFT. It's a grant intelligent funding program. And, you know, we have these not-for-profits. We will promise not to spam them, go out there. But when they fill out a, a, a gift form, we call it, we have a dedicated person. I hate to say, I say my one of my sons, because my two older sons work for me. But, you know, multiple times during the week, we're hitting those grant databases that we're gifted into for, for this. And, you know, we've, we've gotten, you know, thousands of dollars out. And it doesn't have to be in technology grants. You know, it could be toilet paper for a, for, a, for a homeless shelter. It could, you know, we're just funding that piece. And when we saw what we were actually doing, you know, between that and the Microsoft, you know, not-for-profit or tech, you know, now that it's called Technology for Social Impact Program, feels good to kind of get in there and, and, and get our hands dirty with them. Now, are you actually helping them for the grants? Because I always you know, have helped them with, you know, things like TechSoup and getting their, you know, discounted software. And then they would present me with the technology grants. But are you, am I hearing that right? You're actually going out and looking for grants for your clients? We are. We are looking for that. And then since we're a tier one direct with Microsoft, you know, TechSoup is like my competitor because, you know, on the Microsoft side of it, you know, I'll get them approved inside the Microsoft partner portal. And within minutes, you know, we're gifting them licenses, you know, business, you know, listen, we can, we can give a limited number of Microsoft 365 business premiums out to these not-for-profits. Right. So, you know, Azure gifts, Azure grants that are out there. So, you know, we're kind of knee deep into, into doing that. And if it's a small job, we, we, we donate some of our migration services. Others we're helping with various, you know, pieces and we're tied up with a few grant writers because listen, when we find the grant, there's some work that has to be done. Right. And you know what? We refer out grant writers and they're happy to they're happy to find these, you know, you know, we're diamonds in the rough. So of course my question is gonna be, do you have to be of a certain size to get into that Microsoft portal for doing this, you know, gifting of, of uh, not for profit stuff? You don't. And if anyone's out there and doesn't, you know, doesn't like licensing, you know, definitely reach out to me. Um, you know, it's just a matter of getting them into the portal correctly. And again, they have to true, truly be a true not-for-profit filed correctly because it's not me or Microsoft that's making the decision. You know, they go out, they use a third-party database. You know, once they're put in there as, you know, a not-for-profit type of license, you know, boom. First of all, they get email for free. So lots of times we do these little events through the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber, Greater Pompano Chamber, and Hollywood Chamber, we call it, you know, IT toolkit for not for profits, you know, and we kind of explain to them, hey, listen, I'm a potential donor. We're well past those days of you using a Yahoo or a Gmail or an AOL or a Bell South account to try to fundraise, and you know, the days of the, you know, let me cut up the cut up the the cardboard to make business cards. They have to put some skin in the game. We would tell them how to get some of these things started, what to look for, you know, before my before Amazon killed the smile program, things that they can use. So we we're we're kind of giving them this stuff. And listen, you know, some of you shake your head and go out there and say, hey, how many of these can you do? Listen, not for profits, some of these not for profits, and a lot of them don't have to be those name brand not for profits, do need technology help funding. There's a lot of there's a lot of pieces that are out there. We just stumbled upon you know, a FEMA program, you know, it's funny that today we have our bad day in Florida, but FEMA actually has a grant program that could be, you know, the state of Florida backs this, that are for faith-based organizations as well as not for profit, or they'll say for not for profits that can get grants to go out there and increase their security. And that security is a very vague word, right? You know, some yeah. of it's physical, some of it's cyber. So, you know, we're finding a way to work this FEMA grant program you know, it's $200 million a year that's up for grab. We stumbled upon it. So again, some things are more, it's just really kind of cool. And, you know, our our sales team is um, 
two people that are very engrossed into the community and I refocused everything about five, six years ago. And instead of them being account execs, sales, they are community resource people. They're dedicated to our chambers, to our organizations. And it really has been great to not only give back and to go out there to be part of you know, this not-for-profit community of things that you might never have heard of that, that, that you're like, oh my God, you know, how could I help these guys? Mm. Well, we are definitely going to have to talk off the air because I've got uh, one that, so they've spent the three years of COVID trying to move into this new building. And of course, prices have skyrocketed. Uh, I just helped them with a $25,000 grant to upgrade their security. So we were able to do that for them. And they were looking for other things that they could do to get some, you know, they want, they need new hardware, they need some new stuff. So definitely I'll uh, reach out to you for that. And I always do say also that, remember, it's not just, you know, overall what we think of as not-for-profits. Faith-based organizations are, are out there. We're all part of, you know, we have, we have churches, we have synagogues, we have mosques, we have things that we never even knew were, you know, faith-based that are out there. My own personal synagogue, I, you know, donate pieces of, of tech to and other things like that. So, you know, there's a lot of them that are out there that really are targets on that list. And we really want to try to go out there and help them out. And in reality, a lot of these organizations, you know, have funding, just like you just said, approved waiting there. They just need help. Yep, that is true. All right, Mike, I've got a couple of other questions I want to ask you about uh, some other organizations that you're involved with here in South Florida. But I want to take another quick break and... Uh, do a quick commercial for an upcoming conference that I will be attending this fall. Are you ready to unplug? Are you ready to connect with the brightest minds in tech? Then join us for TechCon Unplugged 2023. From September 7th through the 10th, you'll have the chance to connect with a community of like-minded tech professionals who share your passion and drive. Attend hands-on workshops and breakout sessions to learn new skills and gain fresh perspectives. It's not just about the work. There's also plenty of time to unwind, relax, and have fun with your fellow attendees. Paco says it's where the magic happens. Don't miss this incredible opportunity to unplug, recharge, and take your tech career to the next level. Get your early bird tickets now at techconunplugged.com. All right. So I will be in attendance there hosting as the MC of TechCon Unplugged. Hope to see you there. Mike, you and I are going to be heading out to Denver soon. Looking forward to that. You know, or packed in and beyond. And uh, our good friend, Rob Ray. Man, what a staple in that community, right? You know, yeah. Amazing uh, following. It is. So before I ask you about other involvement here, let's quickly talk about that. So we know each other from ASCII. Uh, we've been to a bunch of events here. Uh, you've been a veteran in this in this industry for, what, 35 years? Yeah, yeah the gray hair show. <laughs> yeah, yep, it's here too. <laughs> so one of the things that I like to ask is what are some of the values that you place on memberships, uh, peer groups, and things of things like that in our industry? You know, it's hard to put a price tag on those kind of things. I got to tell you, you know, we've both been at the ASCII events. We've been on those calls. We go out there. How often do you kind of get an unplugged kind of piece, unmonitored to talk with our peers, right? You know, you look at that. You look at those ASCII events. I'm on the exchange board. Um, you know, the, 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 the channel company events are just, you know, amazing to, to meet peers, to go out there and have these vendors come out. Um, you know, or, local organizations, you know, we're part of South Florida Tech Hub, so it's not just the big ones that are in our industry. You know, we're part of an IAMCP for Microsoft. So I think, you know, I, I, I think we're only as good as the last 10 minutes, right? Where are we gonna find some cool things of maybe, you, where can we go out to our peers to find out about a PSA, Marvin, you know, you'll, or, a new product out there. So yeah. I got to say, if you're not involved, you got to get involved. You know, more, more, we might have never personally got, got involved if we didn't meet in an event like this, right? You know, so I think it's important that everybody, you know, picks that group, picks what works for there. And you know what, just don't be a fly on the wall. 
you know, you think about how many ASCII members, Marvin, and we go on that monthly call and there's, you know, 20, 30, 40 people not taking advantage of, you know, their membership and, you know, forgetting the discounts and all the other things, just meeting your peers. Yep. Well, think about it this, as I mentioned earlier, we are literally 2.1 miles apart yep. in Fort Lauderdale. Now, for some towns that may be too close, <laughs> yeah. but here in Fort Lauderdale, we, we've got a pretty dense population. So, you know, you could be here and never run into somebody that's literally right down the street. And so being a part of these organizations, uh, I can tell you this, I've had many chats with your good friend, Don Sizer. Oh, yes. And uh, she has said, you have got to hook up with Michael. And she even she even told me to show up at your office one day, but I think you were you were you were out doing something medical. So that, yeah, didn't that happen. was where we hosted the Pax 8 event that was yeah. in a parking lot. You know, all of our competitors, you know, the year before I was there, but you know, all you know, all of our community, I don't even want to call them competitors, you know, Pax 8 did this great tour, rolled down everything, put everything in our parking lot, and it wasn't a, about us. We raised we we, we uh had food donated, you know, canned items for a local not-for-profit that were there. We all get to hang out, play games, you know. It was great to show you community and have a, a partner like Pax8 bringing us all together. Yeah. So when you say community, let's do a quick shift here because one of the things I wanted to ask you is your involvement, not just with these groups and organizations. You have also been, you, I think you were president of the Technology Council, of the Fort Lauderdale Chamber. Uh, I used to be a part of that. I haven't done as much. I reminded when i read that i'm like oh, i gotta do more with the chamber but you have become a staple with south florida sports <laughs> so i know that there are there are companies out there that are just dying for the kind of exposure that you have so i wanted to ask you how did that start and can you describe to people what it actually is so if you haven't noticed from behind me or on my shirt today, I have been a Florida Panthers season ticket holder since 1996, since I moved down here. And about seven years ago, we've always, we've done business with the Florida Panthers for a while. About seven years ago, their, their IT manager had left and actually came to work for us. And for four years, we ran what's now the FLA Live Center, you know, an 18,000 seat arena you know, Florida Panthers hockey club plays there, you know, concert venue. And for four years, you know, we were IT there. You know, year two, we, we became a corporate sponsor because, you know, when you work with these teams, it's, you know, it's, it's give and take on that. And, you know, it's been, it was amazing for me. You know, I, my, my kids grew up in, in none of us play hockey, but we've been avid fans. So uh, probably about a year ago, our good friends at PAX 8, you know, reached out to me, you know, Ken Patterson, Frank over there, Frank Bauer, all the guys. And Acronis has this very unique program that's in place called Team Up. And it's not just that you become, I'm the official cyber partner of the Florida Panthers Hockey Club. It becomes a relationship that goes out there. So through Pax 8 and Acronis, you know, they connected us with the Florida Panthers. We did some interviews. We did some, some pieces that are out there. Um, Acronis became a staple in what we do on there. But, you know, we had the opportunity this year, you know, just kind of tomorrow night's the last game of the season. But we put they put together an amazing package where not only are we the provider for Florida Panthers, you know, we get, you know, we get major exposure. So after every game on the game cards or during the games, you know, our name is on the, the, the social posts that are out there. If you are lucky enough to get Bally Sports or Sunshine Sports, when we watch a game, you know, uh, the NHL has a pretty cool technology where, you know, they might be playing in Montreal and lo and behold, you know, the, the hockey boards change to various vendors and our logo comes up with a Cronus. Our logo goes on the ice. And, you know, it's been an amazing experience for us with the Acronis team up. Now, at the Acronis partner event and in some meetings, you know, we get to meet with other people. One of my competitors has the New York Islanders. You know, there's the Buffalo Bills. There's, uh, I'm just thinking of the teams, the Colorado Avalanche, the, the Boston Red Sox. So we all become kind of a cool family. But for me, you know, I think I was on a networking call the other day. Actually, it was a Quick Pets Partner Advisory Council. We're all introducing them. There was someone I didn't, and I, I recognized the name, and he was he was in West Palm Beach. We were all talking about it, and Quick Pets knew about this. 
mention something and when you hear your competitors say, oh my God, Mike, I saw your logo on there. How the heck are you advertising up in Canada? You know, so it, it really has been a great experience for us uh, on there being huge hockey fans. I have my own personal tickets. Um, through the program, we're able to, with the Florida Panthers um, uh, Foundation, donate money to not-for-profits. We're gonna have a cyber summit at the arena, you know, I had a couple of sweet nights where we, our first sweet night, we actually had, you know, veterans come to our suite. We do some work with BPS, Broward, Broward, County, Sheriff, Broward County Sheriff's Office. You know, I bring my family there. We've closed a lot of business and we've given away tons of tickets, donated jerseys, sticks, all care of that to, to all around the community. So for me, if you can't tell, elated that are out there. And I will say, that for every game that was broadcast on TV, I actually have a picture of my logo. When the hockey boards come out, every center of the ice, if you, any of you guys out there are hockey fans, where it could be you know, in uh, TD Garden in Boston, Montreal, I got a whole slew of pictures. And the Acronis team is just as excited each time as I send them pictures. And the Pan Panthers make us feel like, you know, where, when I went to a, a, a couple of sponsor nights, I'm there with Geico, I'm there with big hospitals, I'm there with Joe DiMaggio Memorial, you know, I'm there with Jameson, and here I am, you know, Mike Goldstein, little IT owner compared to that. So it's been a really great experience, thank Tax 8 for it, and it really had given us a lot of exposure. Well, little IT company, my ass. <laughs> I mean, come on now. And, and folks, just to give you an idea, so, when the Florida Panthers first came into existence, I wasn't in tech yet. I was marketing director for Junior Achievement of South Florida, and we did a partnership, and those are air quotes that you see, with the Florida Panthers, and we got to be a part of stuff, and we got to be a part of the first, uh, was it 90, when it, whatever they went to the playoffs the first time. 90, 90. Uh, Van Bree's book and all of that. We were a big part of that, and then, of course, it just, evaporated i don't don't know what happened and uh it's a big deal different ownerships that were out there and yeah you know, that's true Heisinga was big in junior achievement and then when he yeah. sold his part yeah it's a lot of changes but it, it's a big deal so you know for you know it companies out there msps that are wondering can it be done here's an example it was done first of all you were able to lure away the it person from the Panthers. So that, that says you had something going really good with your company. And you know what? It, it, it's kind of cool, this whole aspect of it today, because they treat me like I'm the Coca-Cola of the world, you know, in this thing, you know, we had three sweet nights, you know, I got to bring my, my family out to the penalty box, see the players. We, we had an event a couple of weeks ago, they call it paint the ice. I got to bring my grandkids. So I have a, a three-year-old, boy, two and a half year old girl, a two and a half, a two year old girl and a five month old boy. So the three and the two and a half love hockey. They're yelling and screaming. We have to go walk the ice with paint brushes, paint on the ice, you know, see that, you know, I got to ride the Zamboni with a, with a, with a, 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 a suite full of my clients looking out there taking pictures, you know, so it was kind of fun and we got to share. And I think that's the biggest thing. In majority of my tickets I've donated, I've donated to auctions. We have um, a Gilders Club event in a couple of weeks, took a jersey that was signed, gave them some tickets for future next season out there because their event is April 20th. You know, so you can do a lot with this besides just flashing the logo out there. Right. And I, I, now, along with all the glory that comes along with it, you still got to do the tech. I do so, got to do the tech. I. Without Without going behind the curtain, what can you tell us about, you know, that type of tech that you, you're providing? So we've partnered up with them. We haven't had hands on on their tech, but, you know, Acronis is in their stack of things. OK, you know, for them, you know, I, you know, seven years ago, six years ago when we ran IT, there are different different tech that's out there than it is today. You know, Wi-Fi is lit up and lit up throughout all over the place, secure. You know, it, it's a different, it's all about the fan experience now. And I think that's throughout all the arenas that are in place there. You know, scoreboard's amazing, you know, and even when we did tech there. So right now we're not hands-on, you know, we're just the cyber partner out there. You know, listen, it's the same old. You got reporters, journalists, people coming in, got to get on Wi-Fi, got to print, you know, 
But, you know, the coolest thing, and it's not current, but even when we were out there, you know, seeing them on a weekend in December to have, you know, a Friday night hockey game, the Y100, you know, concert series on a, on a, on a, on a Saturday, hockey on a Sunday, you know, they do the Orange Bowl Classic and see them convert, you know, a single purpose arena into basketball, you know. It's it's pretty cool. And then when you see that, you know, that game ends and, you know, you had some tech that was out there and it doesn't make a difference if it's a win or loss or if you think you have a bad team or not. It's somewhere on ESPN. It's somewhere in a scoreboard thing. And tech needs to keep those arenas running and the teams live on it. And the best part about that is if nobody talks about the tech, you've done your job. 100% 100% agree. And you know, I will say, and I asked the other Acronis team up partners, I said, you know, am I crazy when I take all these? And the guy goes, you mean you take pictures every time you see a logo and people that have been doing this for a couple of times? It's, it's, it's really cool to be able to watch a game and, you know, start seeing the text go up. Hey, Mike, I saw this. You know, it's kind of cool. How'd you do that? And I think that's it. And, you know, we, we evaluated this program and we evaluated Acronis beforehand. And, you know, it was an interesting partnership. And like I said, we will be having a cyber summit that we'll talk about, you know, at the arena. We'll get the arena to ourselves. You know, we'll be able to have, you know, do things for their for the Acronis Foundation. You know, there, there are cool things about it. All-Star Game was down here this this year. You know, we participated in a beach cleanup. I, you know, we're very involved with local Broward County government. You know, right before the All-Star Game, we were at a VIP event. You know, when the mayor comes up to you and the county commissioners and, you know, it's it's really kind of cool compared to everyone else that's in that room. So, you know, look for it. Go out there. These teams need tech. They need security. You know, think about everything that goes on there. And it's, it's right. pretty amazing. Now, the event that you're doing on the 20th, and we didn't talk about this beforehand. Do you have a link that I can put in the show notes for the um, episode that people can see? We'll have the event. So great for us that the florida panthers just clinched a spot in the playoffs yeah. but now we're delaying our events because now i need them you know the bad part about trying to do an arena event is that you compete with playoffs hopefully we go far i will get you that to put at a future show okay that, that's in place there we're dealing with that in concert so it's hard for us to to pin all this down but it's kind of cool and what we are going to focus on and to show you a different side of it we are going to talk about cybersecurity, but we're also going to lean into how this feeds the bad guys and some things that are dear to my heart that we do a lot of speaking on is you know i hate to even bring it up but you know listen it's exploitation bullying of children and those type of pieces so we are going to you know talk about this bring up some of our not-for-profits to talk about this because we all know that you know the the cyber part of it affects businesses but it also feeds the bad guys that are out there so we want to highlight some of our not-for-profits that are doing this but we also want to try to do a day in a life of you know you coming to the florida panthers game going to a concert going something and how the florida panthers organization protects us as consumers that are out there participants their vendors and we want to just do something a little different than feeds and speeds and you know, honor some of our not-for-profits that are helping out, including you know the Panthers Foundation and the Acronis Foundation. All right, Mike, you have been a true advocate for tech. You have been an advocate for MSPs throughout the community. I want to commend you for that and thank you for that. And um, you know, you do a lot of education, uh, educational stuff. Uh, I saw you on a recent uh, podcast with the MSP Startup Stories. But the question that I do have for you is I've, I've not seen a recent episode of 15 Minutes with Michael. <laughs> I will say, so I am part of a uh, CEO group and we did the 15 minutes. Our next piece is to turn around and put something together that will be Ask Michael. And what we're going to uh-huh. do is we're going to get some people from various industries that are in the South Florida area to come on and unscripted you know bring your tech questions your tech challenges and we'll be putting something together like on that scale because it's just something different you know we all do our canned pieces that are out there we're going to try to do this semi-live and we are going to focus as you can imagine in not-for-profits that are you know asking these technology challenges so almost like x ask the expert all right so ask michael look for that coming up soon all right. Well, Mike, we are, we had a lot of stuff we thought we would get to, but 
we're running out of time, but because you are a transplanted Flor Floridian, we have to, uh, oh, my soundboard is off. Look at that. It's the storm. <laughs> That is our Florida Gator sound, and we are going to talk Florida man. And I do want to put up a notice for those of you that are watching the video. You will want to stay afterwards because we have a special exclusive Florida man song that a ro local radio station has put together. Uh, Mike, you you've uh, you mentioned Y100 earlier based out of Palm Beach, uh, Footy and uh, oh, that crew. I remember them well. <laughs> I actually did IT services for Footy at his house. Really? Very cool meeting him in person and seeing yeah. all the stuff that's there. Yep, I remember Footy. I did an event with him uh, where he grabbed the mic out of my hand. <laughs> it was fun there. But a local group that I follow now, KVJ, uh, on 97.9 did that. Uh, do you watch them? Uh, I watch them. It is uh, extremely hilarious. And obviously, as you get, I'm glad you put up the little warning because it. Uh... <laughs> yes. Uh, viewer discretion advised. So it will not be a part of the regular uh, podcast, the audio portion. So you'll want to come back to either the show notes or the video and get the link to that. But um, Mike, so you have uh, been here, what'd you say, 26 years? 26 years. And so you have seen your your share of Florida Man. Do you have a great Florida Man story that you'd like to share? I will say that in my early years of coming back and forth, we used to go down to the Keys a lot. You know, I was first pulled over, saw a, you know, saw that gator on the side of the road, and I saw a crowd around it. So, you know, pre-cell phone days, you know, you stop there, and instead of kind of lifting it up, people are just harvesting it right there. It was like the craziest kind of thing. I've never seen, they're like, hey, it's gator, you know? And it was just one of those crazy kind of things that I never thought I'd see. You know, it's almost like if you're up north and the deer's out there, they're not trying to help or move it off the road. They're just carving it up. So it was the craziest thing I kind of saw uh, 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 on the road live. And of course, pre-cell phone days. So. You'd be amazed. People waiting online to get their piece. Mm. Crazy stuff. Yep. Well, I'm not going to actually do a story. I'm just going to go through a bunch of pictures here. So I'm going to share my screen and see if I can do this properly. I did not prep for this. But for those people that love gator stories, so five days ago, one of the most famous gators down here in South Florida named Croczilla was spotted sunbathing. <laughs> Croczilla is estimated to be 18 feet and almost 2,000 pounds. Whoa. So to uh, get pictures of him uh, was pretty amazing. And I'm going to go through another quick picture here. He is so famous that he has had uh, posters and stories made up about him. In 2013, Croxzilla, the DVD. Let me go back and find some other stuff here. Uh, Croxzilla. Now, I don't think it was just our particular Croxzilla. I think that this is just a made up of a giant uh, crocodile <laughs> out of there, but uh, that is what is floating around down here. I, I don't have the actual story, I will have the link in the episode notes. But uh, he was, huh? Crazy, <laughs> yep. So, uh, you have heard stories of alligators being big, but Croxilla, 18 feet, 2,000 pounds, a sighting, and basically just sunbathing and eating other reptiles is basically what that was. So that is your Florida man story for this week. Oh man. All right. So Mike, uh, I probably should have asked you some other questions, but I'm going to have to have you back on. And I think the good flow of dialogue went, went well, you know, it did. It did. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's see. As I mentioned earlier, to head over to itbusinesspodcast.com to see the video of me in Tech Bar, you should also go there and get caught up on any past episodes that you've missed. Uh, check out our sponsors and affiliates, Net Ally, Computers Done Right, and our newest, my good friend Corey Fruitman at Instant House Call. And we are going to be back. So the month of April seems to be all MSPs and all Florida people. I was going to say Florida men, but my guest next week is a Florida woman who is now residing in my hometown of Satellite Beach. So she will be our guest, Allie Johnston of um, Bell Tech uh, Services up there in Satellite Beach. So, Michael, thank you for hanging out. Thank you. And uh, we'll catch up again soon. And yep. ladies and gentlemen, thank you for downloading and subscribing to the show. Hey, let your friends know. Got a good little podcast here. Hope to keep it going. And if you are here with the video, stay with us uh, right afterwards, and we will bring you the new Florida Man song. Everyone else, we'll see you next time. And until then, holla. All right. Stop the record button so I don't get that on there. And uh, oh, good. yep. So let me get this video up here. This is so they just released this this week, and I hope that uh, I hope that it plays real good over the airways. I had to uh, condense it because it was a full 1080, I don't know, 1084 oh, K or something. So uh, for those of you that are watching the video. Let me warn you, uh, there is graphic language. Viewer discretion is advised. Listening discretion advised. If you don't like curse words, turn off your iPod or iPhones or whatever now. But here it is, folks, from my good friends over at KVJ, the radio show, The Florida Man Song. Or how much you have to drink tonight? Couple. A couple? Eh, I think it's a little more than a couple. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah. Florida is awesome most of the time Until we make headlines for doing fucked up crimes Florida is the weirdest place in the land And I blame it on the Florida man You see, I was born and raised in Florida And I've seen my share Fucked up stuff. The puppet masturbating is out of hand, and I blame it on the Florida man. Florida man is drunk as a skunk, and he's humping a bush, and he's flashing his junk. Oh no, you got to protect yourselves from the Florida man. Florida man makes really weird faces While he takes big old dumps in public places Oh Lord, please save us from the Florida man This Florida man is accused of having sex with a miniature horse on multiple occasions. A man has been banned from two Florida parks after allegedly kicking several swans in the head for karate practice. A man accused of using a water gun to squirt urine at a woman says he would do it again. Florida man is gonna scare you to death And if you ask him what he had for breakfast he will say meth And cocaine My sweet lord protect us from the Florida man, Florida man, nothing his hand, Florida man, dick in his hand. Ah. <laughs> 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 and how many of those stories did you recognize? I recognized about 50% of those things. Oh my God, the, the trying uh, to stick the gator in the garbage can. Yes, yeah. Oh that has God. been on the show. Uh, the Florida man with the Florida tattoo. 
uh, on his face. The guy with the flag in the middle of the hurricane. Yep, all of those oh have my been. God, it is crazy. Here. We live in a crazy state. <laughs> we do. And I have not yet seen the Florida Man series on Netflix. So, got to watch that and see how that uh, pans out for us. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, all right, Mike. Well, uh, I don't know if you can, you probably can't hear, but it is pouring over here. I hear the same thing out the window here at this point. Just had a new roof put on a couple months ago, new gutters. So, you know, it was, uh, I'm hearing different sounds in my house, but oh my God. I don't know if the gutters really help with this much rain. Ours are overflowing. And I, I'll, I guess I can say this. Uh, the wife probably won't watch this on. So we had a patio added uh, onto the back of our house. When we bought the house, it was just a concrete slab. So we closed it in with the patio. And that's been about eight years now. So <laughs> she's got two buckets out on the patio because we have places where it leaks <laughs> and wouldn't be such a big deal, but we put tile uh, underneath the patio awning and stuff and screened it in. So she's afraid that the tile in the grouts are going to be messed up. So she's got buckets and she's probably emptied those buckets four or five times in the last uh 24 hours oh my god you know it is uh listen you know what we kind of need it but we don't need it all at once yeah i was hoping that it would you know the best place for it to rain like this is just north of lake okeechobee oh yeah oh yeah uh well listen hopefully it's just a day or so and uh we'll be done with this all right so mike besides all of your uh, public appearances and stuff. How else is business? Business has been great. Definitely have uh, no complaints, you know, just trying to keep up, you know, always looking to partner up, always still thinking community, you know, it's been good. Listen, we got to, we got to sit out there and every day, you know, we're fighting another fire, right? You know, yep. there, there's, there's somebody that, you know, their printer won't print there or, you know, they'll think of it. I forgot my password, you know, on top of the other fires. So, so my story yesterday was a client called, well, let me rephrase that. I actually called them because I had monitoring on that their connection had gone down. They have Comcast. So I'm like, yeah, Comcast, it'll be back up soon, but never came back up. Ooh. And come to find out. It wasn't Comcast because they actually canceled Comcast. This is a company that uh, merged with another company. Ugh. So Comcast was their primary when I had it. And then their secondary was a company called Fusion. Well, they. Hotwire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the old Hotwire. Well, they didn't tell me they canceled the Comcast, but I didn't pay attention because I was monitoring both WAN connections. Uh, so. They were down. I called them. They said, oh, yeah. And I said, okay, well, here's the number to call Fusion because there was nothing I could do. They call Fusion. And then like 10 minutes later, they're calling me back asking me if I know their IP information. <laughs> and I said, aren't they your ISP? <laughs> and they don't know. You know. And on the cancel thing, I had a client that moved from you know one location to another. They planned it. Um, they ordered service. I told them that their at t won't be in in time. They go, don't worry. You know, we're just going to absorb the existing tenants Comcast. I was like, listen, I don't think it works that way. But you know what? You guys know best. You know, came to the, came to the Friday before the move. They had to be out of their building. You know, we go to light up everything and pre-test everything. No internet. And, you know, hey, listen, you can't. Uh, eventually, they got the right person at Comcast. We can't just turn it on. You're a new tenant. The other guy is out. You can't just transfer these things. And the guy was out. I was like, listen, you know, you could yell and scream all they want. No one cares who you are. They're not going to just flip this on for you. And, you know, 10 days they were working off of, you know, my fies. Yeah, good old Comcast. So I, I've enjoyed them immensely. Uh, as much as I've mentioned them on this podcast, they should be giving me free internet. They uh, they decided yesterday at 7.45 a.m. that they were going to do an upgrade in the area. 
but not tell anybody. Oh my God. So I come into an office with no internet and I call them and they're like, oh yeah, we're doing an upgrade. We'll be up around 10 05. I'm like, well, first of all, why didn't you tell us you were doing an upgrade? Right, right. <laughs> you know, you, you look at the dumb thing. So about three years ago, my son moved into a brand new community in, in uh, West Delray. And you can only get Comcast there. So they schedule the Comcast thing. My son moves in, tells me, hey, can be over? Comcast is coming there. So I go. And in the front of his house by the curb, there's like the underground piping that's up. And it's coming up out by his stuff. So the Comcast guy goes and hooks everything up. And he's like scratching his head saying, listen, I don't know what's up. You know, got all plugged in. I'm like, dude, you're not plugged in. He goes, no, I'm plugged in. I go, here's the, you know, that orange thing that they put under the ground. There's nothing going to the house. We go back and forth with these guys for for a day. I had to call someone I knew to kind of escalate the call. And they're like, oh, you know what? The house isn't connected up. We're not connected to the main pipe underneath. I'm like, I've been telling you guys, but can you imagine the tech spending all the time, getting everything in the house done, doing all this stuff. And, you know, finally turns everything on on the outside. Like, where's the other plug? <laughs> this is, and they had multiple yeah. people that showed up in the same day, scratching their heads. And I'm like, I don't want to tell everybody how to do their job, but where is that coming in? Oh, it's under the house. Like, why is this stuff that's like right there? It is amazing how much we have to tell them what to do. I mean, it's, I mean, Comcast is one, Windstream is another. I, I mean, oh, yeah, just I battles with Windstream, uh, especially when their DNS isn't working and they don't, Oh yeah. You know, oh, our stuff always works. If I didn't have my testers, I'd be like, um, you know, it'd just be, you know, yelling at, screaming at the wall. You know, we 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 have um, there's a project going on in Pompano. It's called Wahoo Bay, and it's right on it's right on um, US one, right before the Deerfield Inlet, right under right under yeah. the bridge, the gorgeous hey, south, park, Southwest Tenth, there- and that area yeah. near the cove. It, it's it's further it's further um, south than that. It's more okay. closer to um, you know the Pompano area. Little bit. so this little inlet. It's the Deerfield Inlet where all the boats come in and out. Okay. They have they're they're taking this portion of water and they're putting these little underwater tiles that are there to help grow um, wildlife and they're turning it into uh, you know cams. They have all this funding. I helped them get Comcast in touch. Comcast has fiber coming underneath the bridge. Comcast scoped this out. All we needed is there's a little museum. They just got to get it in there. The city of Pompano said, listen, you tell us what permits. We're fast tracking this. We'll get this all done. I'm waiting four months for them to do this. And they're like, if there are any delays, call the city commissioner. We'll tie you in. We've tied them in multiple times. They are willing to trench themselves, and Comcast just can't get the. They just keep giving us updates. They promise the line in, and the fiber pipe is underneath the bridge. They really just have 400 feet, not even that, trenched along the county. They said that they would actually trench for Comcast. All they had to do was just connect up. Still right. can't get it done. Wow. Yeah. You know, Amazing. You think about it. Here, you you usually worry about the permitting. And the city yes. take home. Here's the city's like, we'll do everything for you. They are tempted to actually go from another side where they have another city piece at the end of the park. The guy's like, Mike, we're going to trench this whole thing in another month and just piggyback on this other connection that we have. We'll run the wire. I was like, man, if you're backhoe in that park, can I can I be there and drive the backhoe? You know, it was just they're willing to do anything to light this up because this is something that's like a, a nationally focused project because if these these types of tile tile that that are meant to help grow the seabed starts doing what they think it is you know they're going to put this all over the country to go out Mm -hmm. um and fau were involved they have all these sensors waiting and i can't light them up wow dumb stuff dumb podcast i mean their commercials just drive me bonkers you know the most reliable fastest internet in more places but the one you need, you can't get. Right, right, right. Listen, you know what? We, we, we sit out there and, you know, if it's really about business, you know, we've seen some AT&T fiber gig pipes both ways. 
come in in parts of Fort Lauderdale at under 150 bucks a month, pure fiber. So, you know, whereas you go out there and your broadband costs more than that. So, and it's a lot of places. It's not like the places that you would expect. Even my office, I have that AT&T fiber coming in, gig both ways, you know, probably 130 bucks a month. Oh, your SLA that's out there, but yet, you know, you go out there and you have broadband going down all over the place. You can't get somebody to, to kind of help you out. Well, I'm I'm stuck with Comcast here because they're the only game. I can't get the AT&T fiber. Now, a couple of blocks over, right. I can, but not here at my business. So I'm kind of stuck until they we got finish. Lucky. We got lucky when we, when we had it in there. And then, you know, they actually lowered my price to go higher in speed. I was shocked. And wow. by the way, you know, for your inconvenience, we'll send you a $100 gift card too. You know, I was like, how, how can I say no? You know, it, 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 yeah, but you know, I'm in a, I'm in a 700 home community in West Boca and we have hot wire throughout the community. And, you know, I'm at like, I'm at a gig to my house. You know, I love their service that goes out there, you know, go, goes in place there. And, you know, it, it, it's kind of amazing. And I've seen them light up a bunch of communities that, that are out there. I haven't had, I think we have a couple of customers that have the fusion stuff that's out there, but listen, you know, I guess on any given day when you most need the internet, right? They all suck. Yeah. It's, I mean, it is. So you mentioned the Comcast. So my client that's been trying to get that new building done, the not-for-profit, they're in Port Everglades. Wow. And at the beginning of COVID, they stopped all new construction going in. <laughs> and so when they finally opened it up, Comcast had been sending them letters saying that, hey, we're going to be in the port. Do you want service? And we said, of course, you know, yes, because they were paying $1,000 for an old Windstream T1. Oh, my God. <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah, I'd love to get them on Comcast. And so when we finally did it, signed the paperwork, everything, Comcast came out and said, oh, no, we can't give it to you unless you want to do construction. And wow. how much was construction? ton of money 30 grand wow wow you know sometimes it's finding the right person so inside of trade winds park you know off a sample yeah sample then, not for uh, profit that we went in to see it's called equine therapy associate and equine therapies so they have a full stable they're a full not-for-profit you know they bring a lot of people for horse kind of therapy right. and go out there so when i went to go visit them they were paying that crazy windstream t1 and right across the road, I could say I could throw a stone across the road was, you know, one of the parks, park, uh, you know, Broward County Park Commission places. They had tons of pipe that were going in there. So we couldn't find anything. So we eventually found the right person in Comcast. And because they, they, they no one wants to trench into the park. It's about a mile and a half from the from Sample Road. But we got them to, to say, hey, listen, you know, you got these things, these things, here's a not for profit, you know, see what you could do. We were able to get them a piece of pipe, but, but at first we went to the park and we we're like, Hey, listen, could we mount a point to point on your building? And the County wouldn't do it, but no. you know, we found the right person at Comcast and wherever it goes to the County, there was a small trench and they were able to bring it to this, you know, it's, it's a stable, you know, it's a bigger, big thing, but you know, right. here they are, they're trying to do stuff and they're, they're, Paint, their only connectivity was a ripoff, you know, Windstream T1 that, you know, my cell phone got better coverage. So sometimes you can find the right person. That's not the case, but we were digging for a long time to try to find someone to help us out. I'm going to have to get on your contact list because, uh, I mean, listen, I got them service. I got them Airspring is who we ended up getting in there. And it's like a 50 meg circuit for like 400 bucks. Uh, it's not horrible. But, uh, you know, we, we partnered up with the guys at, you know, uh, Talaris, you know, so, yep, I, yep, I'm with them. And, you know, we, we I just kind of tell the clients, listen, we'll just run that. We'll just run that number, see what we can get. And then I put their pieces, their people on a lot of it. And sometimes if you go out there, you know, and uh, and whine a lot, that they have some good context because that's all we're doing. I'm like, guys, just let me get you younger. I don't want I don't want this to be like an Amazon kind of thing where you're just like dialing getting the rep of the day you know calling up all of these other companies do it here i guarantee you it's going to be the best price and whatever they tell you is out there 
you know, at first with the equine, we were actually doing, we were, we, we had a reasonable price for much faster than a T1 to do some satellite uplink that they found. And then somehow someone overheard what they were doing through, to, and they're like, oh, you know what? We got this, we can possibly piggyback off of this because it's a not-for-profit. For you and me, it would never happen. Right. But, you know, they wanted to do this and it was just kind of crazy. But, you know, y- y- People, you know, take for granted, you know, occasionally you see one of these, you know, who would think that, you know, in, in our United States, that people without internet, right? You know, you hear this all the time. Yeah. I remember watching a Heat game. The Heat were playing the Pistons. And I remember seeing a Detroit, you know, internet for Detroit commercial. And I did a little research and I was like, wow, you know, Detroit's definitely a ma- major city, but there are chunks of the city that are considered, you know, a metro area that barely yeah. have dial-up speed. Nothing. I was shocked. Yeah. It's a lot. That's a big Detroit of all places, you know, that they should have it. it would, hey, listen, Fort Lauderdale, we still have places here, you know, uh, my street. And so, you know, just to give you an idea uh, without letting everybody know where I'm at, I'm at power line and commercial. Got it. So nothing. And that's crazy because you're at the crossroads of, right. of everything. You know, the stadium, you know, the stadium's a couple blocks from you. The yeah, well, stadium, maybe you Beckham is screwing us on that. You know that deal. Yep, yep. But all I'm saying is there's so much over there. You've got Citrix that's walkable from you that probably has pipes coming in. Yep. <laughs> Citrix, Microsoft is an, another yep, couple yep, of streets yep. down. Um, it is, there's, there's a bunch of stuff here. It really is very unusual when you find those shortages that are out there. You know, listen, and there are plenty of places that have really good Comcast. I just have to admit, you know, but there, it, with every good experience is a bad experience, right? You know, that you go out there and, you know, when it's that pure broadband, you know, people forget, you know, that that copper wire could be older than us that's yeah. sitting out there, right? And then yeah. we're, we're hoping that internet goes out there or even in, you know, you go in that downtown Hollywood area with all those with all those alleyways, you know, broadband's coming across of old telephone poles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, down by the circle. It's yep, right out of that circle. Those alleyways out there, we had a client that over a weekend, it was a while ago, you know, car wreck in the alleyway, took down the telephone poles. You know, no one on that square block had any, you know, and you look at it, it's like, holy crap, it's up in the old wooden 30-year-old telephone poles. Yeah. So, I'll give you a little background. So our Comcast is up on a pole behind our building. So this is there's two build, two businesses here, front and back. So we go up to the 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 pole there. Our Comcast is shared with the residential neighborhood behind us. Wow, wow. You know we're kind of lucky because the block that we're on off of commercial, you know, Flexential's in there, and that whole. There's a huge conduit going to, I've been on that same block for probably 18, 20 years. And the only reason I stuck with that area is that because the Florida Department of Transportation is down the street. And I was gonna say, you got that, you got, you got two data centers yeah. right around you. And it worked out because, you know, they clear that area, you know, post hurricane, if we had to get back to our offices, you know, there were multiple, you know, older hurricanes where, you know, I kind of lived in Flexential, you know, <laughs> get AC power, but, you know, clearing that block. But we kind of, we kind of got lucky, you know, being on that block. And, you know, I guess sometimes, you know, when you talk to Tolaris or that kind of stuff, the guys from there, you know, you'll, they'll, they'll show you what the map looks like of all right. the concentration. And you're like, whoa, that's like the underground. And you see yeah. all the crazy stuff, but yeah, it's, it's, it, it's crazy. So in my community, you know, where, Seven years ago, we we because the community is here since you know 97, 98 was Comcast when Hotwire came in seven years ago, retrenched everything. And I'll say in my community, seven years ago, I got a fiber controller in my backyard. They trenched, you know, five, 10, 15 yards to my house in my attic. And this is how they did all the houses. There's a fiber run that comes up, there's a switch that's there. There's two UPSs. They put all this in and the cable boxes are actually hardwired Ethernet. They're there. They were, you know, Cisco DVR type devices. So the whole community has home, you know, each control has a home run to our central pool area. It's kind of crazy the Mm. technology they put in uh, on there. And, you know, it's it's pure fiber run. We had the the 
pylon, the, the big thing go out and, you know, it's just fiber runs to each of the houses. Nice. And that's now, how they do their communities. Now you're, uh, are you east or west of the turnpike? I'm west of the turnpike. I, okay. So I that means so every, you've got everything underground out there, right? Right, right. Okay. And also, obviously, the community was built that way. I mean, we're here a while. But when when the hot wire came in, I remember I was one of the first people on the block. I mean, they couldn't get some. They drilled through. They drilled through the cinder block to get some things into my house. And, you know, they had to wire the Ethernet. And, you know, it, it was crazy. You know, the tech. And when you call their data center, you know, when you call with a tech problem, it's not like the crazy things that we might go through with other providers. You're getting a guy, they know the MAC address, they're connected directly to the box, so they don't see the box. I mean, the tech that Hotwire actually put in for residential was really kind of crazy. Now, hmm. is it as fancy as Xfinity? Definitely not. But, you know, I'm on, I, I think I got a gig, com, gig internet each way, you know, up and down, coming to the house. It's, you know, less than, less than 60 bucks, you know, bundled into it. And everything is on fiber. It is, it is kind of crazy what you could do underground and what these companies do for these longer term contracts. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm just hoping I can stay here long enough to, to enjoy that. Right. Right. Because they got to have the business case, like you said, to go out there and, yeah. uh, and, well, and, you know, this is, so I'm right at the borderline of, so the, the neighborhood behind us is Fort Lauderdale. Technically my street is Oakland park. Got it. And, you know, this is all warehouse, district, yep. auto body shops, you know, plumbing, you know, the blue collar stuff. So it's not like there's law firms lining up the street for that. No. And you know what? I get it. And, you know, anyone listening, you know, my zip, you know, depending on where you. So, you know, we use a Fort Lauderdale address, but, you know, depending on what database, I could be Tamarack. I could ah. be Brooklyn Park, you know, and our zip. It's kind of funny because our zip registers as the lowest, lowest per medium income in actual South Florida. So, you know, we're on that borderline of where you, you kind of go up commercial. And if you hit, you know, Northwest 31st, you know, going south, yeah. it's kind of crazy that you look at that and some of the, you know, the, the distressed areas and things that you could potentially, you know, piggyback on because we've been offered a couple of weird type of financial arrangements or into grants, but it's not something that I feel comfortable taking because we're in a, a specific zip code. You know, it's funny. Your zip code is the same as mine. Cause I was sitting there thinking I've got a, cause I don't know. I didn't tell you this, but I've got a client that's literally on the same side of the street as you on the other end of the complex. Got it. So that's, that's where they are and they've been there for a while and yeah, that's the zip code. And I'm yeah, like, hey, that's the same zip code. And then, isn't there like four other IT companies in that complex? Yeah, they're very close. There was one that was <laughs> down that I think might have relocated. There's a couple that are in there. Again, you know, we're such a, you know, we're such a. There's so much out there. Some of them I don't even know. I look up there. You know, I might be at a Ingram event and see a name come up. I'm like, whoa, that's that's you know. So I've run across. You know that that in areas and listen we have a lot of friends and you know companies that i partner with up in new york city it's even worse there you guys could be you know could be in the same four-story building that could be three it companies yeah. so I, I you're right you know it's it's definitely there but like i said i've been on that block forever i've been in this building for a while and you know on the street across from there easy easy in easy out yep. you know on that side of it but kind of weird how our you know, I, I, I tell vendors that I kind of call them sub cities, right? Because who's heard of Tamarack, sort of Oakland Park, Wilton Manors, you know, you know, so I kind of view that as that. And it's kind of weird, you know, depending on what database that they're looking you up in. Right. Well, and the funny thing is it, it this all used to be Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. You know, everybody's annexing themselves off. And um, it, it's a shame because Fort Lauderdale can't get you know, the numbers to consider itself, you know, one of those metroplex type cities. Right. Um, but it is what it is. And it, it, it is. It, you know, we call it home. I think every place has their little inconsistencies, but it's kind of funny how you, know, you talk about it, you know, where these companies go out there and they have to pull it in. You know, you know, we, 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 we need connectivity in the world. Right. You know, and uh, without that, you know, businesses just can't run. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. 
Uh, speaking of cities, uh, I made a note here to ask you guys, where were you guys in Raleigh? So it was a long time ago, but we were in downtown. And you know what's kind of funny is that what happened was, like you always go out there and think about it. You know, when we started in Washington, when we started in, in, in Florida, and we had a big client fly us down, we decided to open up. But when we went to Raleigh, one of our law firm clients from D.C., lived, retired there. I won't say retired there, started. So we decided, hey, let's start up. And it was like, it was like crazy for us. That was, that, that was one of our fastest growing offices. Mm. And you know, what's funny is one of the things that I always tell people is, you know, we all go, you know, we've got an ASCII. We'll go on some of the things and people talk about, well, they'll look down on how we market or different things in cities. So I was in one full swoop, Miami, Raleigh, Washington, and, and New York City. So what worked for me in New York City, we tried in DC, but Raleigh was the funniest because the first time I flew down there and we had an established office and I was doing an event, I remember, you know, listen, I'm a suit and tie guy. You've seen out there. It's just, and I fly down. Yeah, not steak, in Raleigh. Steak and dinner. Well, what did I know? You know, we gave out, you know, like you showed the Ignite thing. We gave out fancy little things. So I remember starting my presentation. I remember one guy standing up. He goes, you know, Mr. Mike out there. He goes, listen, this is Raleigh. So the first thing you got to do is take off that suit, take off that tie. And you know what? We like baseball caps. So I was like, I was like, all right, guys, took everything off. I said, you know what? Can you give me five minutes? I went into the bathroom because I had my clothes and I changed because I just came off the plane, you know, jean, T-shirt. And they're like, now we're in. There you go. Yeah. So I always say, you know, what works in one port, part of the country or one city doesn't necessarily, you can't replicate. You really have to understand your surroundings. And that was like, that was like my, my eye opener because I was not used to that. And uh, yeah. You know. So I asked that because I went to grad school in Wake Forest and uh -huh. Uh, I was still heavily involved with Junior Achievement. Their office was downtown, so I was in Raleigh a lot. And um, so it is we probably had, you know, a PO box because we had guys that lived there that worked there. Mm -hmm. And you know, my my partner used to fly down to golf. But I, I, you know, it was one of those where you know, you know, people like the Northerners, you know, it, you know, especially the law firms. Like, what are they doing in New York? And it was just a an interesting piece, and it was an eye opener for me. I went back tons of times. What I ended up doing in that time is everyone that came by the next week, they each had four really cool Raleigh style caps yep. into everybody. Cause I realized that, you know, you can't, because listen, lots of times when you're, when you're coming out of a city like New York, you know, people it's, it's different when, even when it came down to Florida, you know, people will be like, you know, up in New York, be like, Oh, you're the Miami guy of this, but you know, going back, it was different, but you know, I, you got to understand your surroundings. You got to understand the demographics of who we're selling to. And I don't yep. even want to say selling to, right. We're all on relationship selling. That's the only way. Well, they don't, they don't want to be sold to, you know, don't come in here trying to sell my boy. <laughs> you know, and but. I was, like I said, I, you know, I walked in and, you know, it was an upper scale steakhouse. I don't remember the name of it. I made them Whatever they were drinking, I brought in bottles. I paid for the bottles for them to do their self pours and to play around. I didn't present much. We dicked around with it. They made fun of me. You know, we talked sports, but you know, having them, whatever they were drinking, the bottles out there, let them pour, hang out. We, it was the craziest night, the craziest event, but it was a great learning experience. And it was a good crowd. It was like 20, you know, mostly guys that were in place there, but you know, taking off the tie, you know, Bring it in the jack, you know, whatever do else that. is local, you did know. You do a pig roast up there? Did not, did not. It was just uh, pig roast and pulled pork. You know, I, I I took people out and flew down multiple times to go out to different places that are out there and, and learn my lesson. But like, you know, listen, these are the things that we have to pass on to these younger, these younger, newer MSPs, because like on the calls, you know, people use it as a stomping ground. I'm always that guy, you know, I get picked on for being the Kaseya guy sometimes or the other pieces. But if we don't have things to pass on, pass on to these, this newer generation, that's going to potentially carry on, you know, what good is it? Right. Well, yeah. I mean, I wish we, I wish they would listen more. A hundred percent agree. But I think it's important when you ask the part of the peer groups, you know, I saw Eric jump on, on your uh, piece that's out there, you know, guys that are, you know, out there from the vendor side, understanding what we kind of want out of these things, 
I love working with I love working with ASCII. I love working with the channel company because you know when you go to an exchange, if you didn't know, all of that stuff is pre-planned by the board, and all of us on the board are just like you. You know, you know when you went up to exchange in Orlando, we already had 70% of exchange August planned already, and we're already talking about March. So you know, trying to figure out what you know. What works for Dawn over in Pennsylvania might not work for Mike here, might not work for the guy in Texas, but we all come to this piece to put together a program that we think will go out there. And the channel company gives us the opportunity to kind of shape it and go out there and, you know, make it fun, bring topics that are different, you know, in place there. You know, our biggest rated session was the session that we talked about, you know, Tell us about your stack. You know, I, I am seed, you know, Dawn was running those pieces and we all just got to, you know, pour it out there. You know, they had to throw us and everyone out because everyone yeah. just wanted to hang out and hear what we all got. Well, I, you know, that was my first exchange event. And once I got past the captive right. uh, timeshare <laughs> component, <laughs> which is uh, once you get past that and you're actually able to, you know, we just had an email with all of the people in our little uh, boardroom. Yep. You had uh, Phil as your, um, uh, uh, Phil, no, Phil I, we had, no have- I had Wayne. Wayne, Wayne was the one that said to me, Hey, you know, I got this guy from Fall Out of L in my group that's out there. You know, I got to introduce you. And I said, Marvin, how the hell do you know this one? I said, Listen, you know, just like us out there. And Wayne's a great guy that's in place there. But, you know, you're right. It is a structured event. And we understand why, right? You know, everything's. Yeah, well, yeah we know why. Yeah. And you know what? I, I, I love uh, the boardrooms are a lot of fun to, to go out there and do. And, uh, like I said, you know, tomorrow at two o'clock we get a, you know, we got another, you know, another meeting to plan for, you know, what we're doing, you know, what we're doing in uh, August. All right. Well, I won't be at that one. I, I was told one a year, so I'll have to pick my event for next year. Yep. It's, uh, listen, they're both they're both good, and hopefully you got a, you know, a lot out of it. I will say the one thing that's important is I we all stay another six to eight hours the day after just to review everything that happened and to make sure that you know i tell our guys whatever you write on that you know sort of like the datto days where you know they yeah. did the bacon comment you know we make sure that we review those and every everything's rated everything has some kpi that we can go out to see if it good or we'll never do this again yeah it was a good event i liked it um uh, had got some great friends out of it and oh zena hassel was oh. in my boardroom so, yeah. you know, I had uh, I I had a couple. We had a lot of newbies in there, but you know, listen, I met Dawn there. Dawn was in my boardroom one year, introduced her to be able to come on the board, and then the following, with if that was a March, the August, her husband was in my boardroom. So you okay. know, it's kind of fun, you know, to, to to see that. And you know, I went to um, their security event in Orlando last year. It was the first time I went to a an exchange event or channel event, channel company event, where was, we, weren't in, we weren't part of the moderators or anything because it's a different board that manages that. So we got to see it from both sides of things. But, you know, listen, fun kind of stuff. Like I said, I think it's all about our network. Yeah, that was good. All right. Well, Mike, I've kept you here yeah. long enough and uh, she let you go. Thank you very much for Thank doing you. this and hanging out. And like I said, we'll have to do it again. But I'm sure we'll see each other at uh, something else. Yep. I'll uh, schedule a call with you, you know, in the next couple of weeks, see how we can better partner together, see how we can help out, you know, and keep in contact, especially on the not-for-profit side of things out there. And, you know, listen, we'll just BS on, you know, lawyers. Yep. <laughs> That's, we can do that <laughs> for sure. So uh, for anybody that has made it this long, thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to end off the show here and, uh, had a great time here with Michael Goldstein, Land Infotech, 2.1 miles apart here in Fort Lauderdale. So that's it, folks. Next time, holla.